Hello and welcome to the European Universes for what DLCs is to buy video. So, when I'm streaming this or uh, making YouTube series of the European Universes 4, people are always asking, uh, like, what DLC should I buy? What should I go with the base game? There are so many of these, I cannot buy all of them. Where to start and what to pick? So, here's here's my, my take on that. A lot of this is uh, always going to be personal touch, of course. Like a personal preference, which one you like your most uh, yourself and which uh, one you don't. But there's uh, definitely some uh, DLCs that uh, everyone should have, and then uh, the rest you can pick and choose yourself. So I uh, s split the DLCs uh, into three different uh, categories, basically: the expansions, uh, content packs, and stuff like that, and then music. And uh, let's start from the expansions. So the, we have there uh, listed uh, all the expansions. And they are pretty much in the order uh, I would uh, I would get them, and uh, I'll I'll give you the reasons why. So let's start from the Art of War and what it does. So Art of War is uh, improving uh, the warfare. Surprise, surprise, as it's called Art of War, and uh, diplomacy related to warfare and doing peace and stuff like that. And it also adds uh, the Thirty Years War and Revolutionary Wars uh, to spice up uh, the game a bit more. So that is, um, in my opinion. One of the most important DLCs for the game because uh, it revolves a lot around doing war, and if you improve that part of the game, you improve a uh, majority of the game. Plus uh, the Thirty Year Wars and Years War and uh, the Revolutionary War also uh, uh, makes the later uh, game content a bit more interesting when there's uh, all the revolutions kicking up and all, all that. So Art of War definitely is one, the number one one to get. Then um, second on my list is pretty much uh, Cossacks, because uh, it focuses on hordes and Eastern Europe, which uh, are a pretty fun play to, uh, place to pay, play the game. But uh, the main reason why I included that as the number one is the internal politics uh, addition uh, that it does, which makes uh, running your country a lot more interesting, which is a, a big part of what you're doing throughout the game as well. I like a... Uh, you have to do that with every country. Some of these DLCs uh, are focused on uh, like certain countries or certain fates or certain type of uh, countries. And uh, those DLCs you want basically when you play with that nation or interact with those nations. For example, uh, the Muslim nations. You want to, If you want to play a Muslim nation, you want the Muslim nation DLCs, of course. But the, these, uh, this DLC also affects uh, practically every nation as you play. And then third is the common sense, which uh, adds uh, diplomacy options and uh, internal development of nations. And it also adds a lot of uh, depth uh, to the religious gameplay of the game. And that also, as I, as I said, affects uh, practically every nation. So, definitely definitely get that as well. And then, uh, then we come to Wealth of Nations, which focuses on improving the trade game gameplay. Of the game, uh, trade is a pretty big part of the game, and uh, even more if you include uh, the wealth of nations. And if you play na na nation, um, sorry, nations uh, that uh, focus a lot of on trading, say uh, Venice, uh, the colonial nations, and all, all of that, uh, Spain, England, and all these big naval nations, you want you want wealth of nations because uh, trade is your your thing. I'm a really bad at uh, the whole trade gameplay part of the European Universal 4 but still I, I would include this pretty high because it makes uh, it makes uh, the game a lot better because uh, by giving uh, the trade more importance it makes uh, certain areas of the world more important where the trade nodes are and uh, all of that so it adds uh, more depth to gameplay through that way then there's the Mare Nostrum which uh, also focuses on trade and adds uh, trade leagues to the game and it also uh, improves the naval portion of the game so Wealth of Nations and Mare Nostrum pretty much go go together uh, to improve uh, and make the whole naval and uh, trade gameplay a lot lot better so that's uh, up there because of that and then we come uh, to uh, Res, Public, uh, yeah, Res Publica which adds uh, republics and factions uh, aristocrats, traders and guilds and also a lot of uh, idea groups uh, for uh, extended uh, exploration of the new worlds. So, also adding uh, 
that more depth, uh, and especially with your going uh, uh, coloni colonizing uh, the new world and all that. Res uh, Republica is uh, also very, very nice, nice one to have. So that's my, my top: uh, the Art of War, the Cossacks, the Common Sense, Wealth of Nations, Mare Nostrum, and Res Publica. That's uh, what I would uh, get, regardless uh, of what nation I'm playing and what I'm doing with the game. So I think those uh, those improve improve the game overall a lot. Although some people don't like how some of the DLCs those DLC, DLCs, but I would get those six would be my my main focus if I'm buying DLC for the game. And then rest of the DLCs uh, on the expansion category: the Conquest of Paradise, El Dorado, Digital Extreme Upgrade, American Dream, and uh, Pre-Order Pack. Are kind of all all of them are uh, focusing on uh, certain parts of the world or certain nations, certain religions, so if you want to play on those, uh, I would get those. So Conquest of Paradise uh, gives you an option uh, to ran uh, create a randomized uh, new new world. So you have the Europe and everything as is, but then the Americas uh, is like totally randomized, so it's not like the real world Americas. And that gives you basically infinite replayability, especially if you are doing uh, lots of uh, exploration and colonization uh, on there in the new world, because it's always going to be different for you. And it also adds uh, the colonies and the colonial nations. So very, very important DLC. Uh, because of that as well. It also uh, in enhances the Native American gameplay. So if you want to play as the Native Americans, uh, especially in North America, this is the DLC you want to have, for sure. Or if you want to play as colonial nations, also very, very important. Then we have Eldorado, which uh, can be very important DLC for some people and a lot less important for a lot of other people. So one of the big things that uh, the Eldorado adds is uh, a nation uh, designer for custom nations. So if you want to create your own nation or nations, uh, this is what you want. If you want to populate the uh, world with uh, strange new nations, uh, you want the Eldorado. And the new nations are pretty fun to play. But some people don't like the custom nations at all, so that drops the value of this DLC tremendously. But it also gives you uh, a lot of more options and has a heavy focus on Central and South American uh, gameplay. So if you want to play some Aztecs or Incas or something in the Southern America or Central America, you want this for that purpose. Then we have the Digital D Extreme Upgrade, which I think should be part of the base base game at this point, to be honest. Same with the pre-order pack. No point uh, separating them, to be honest. And at this point, the game is so old, some of these DLCs are extremely old as well. Like, three years or more. And they could be rolled in into the base game. There's already so many DLCs that you need to buy anyway, so... Start giving the <laughs> earliest ones for free, in, in my opinion. But uh, the digital uh, extreme upgrade uh, enhances a Muslim faith gameplay plus units, gives them un uh, different unit graphics and adds uh, uh, Muslim faith uh, or Muslim uh, themed uh, music when you're playing those nations. So if you look to play a Muslim nation, uh, you want this DLC for sure. Because you get a uh, customer looking units and you get uh, the enhanced uh, events and all the stuff for that. Plus the uh, music is always nice touch, gets you in the mood. And kind of same same thing uh, as uh, for uh, the Muslims, uh, the American Dream adds uh, a gameplay related to uh, around the uh, American Revolutionary War, so you can become the Americas and uh, there's specific units and events and etc. based on that, so if you want to form your Americas, this is what you want. And then a pre-order pack adds uh, 100, wars, uh, 100 years of wars units anyways and events and it also adds uh, units to Byzantine Empire so if, uh, if you're looking to play the Byzantine Empire you want the pre-order pack for that so that's the expansions so the six first ones the most important ones and then uh, the bottom five kind of depending on what you want to do but uh, all the expansions is nice to have and then we come to the content uh, stuff and uh, you have content packs, and you have unit packs, and you have national monuments, and you have ebooks and anthology, and you have the Muslim advisor uh, portraits. 
The Muslim advisor and poor traits are also... I put them on the top there because uh, I felt they are a quite nice addition to the game. Very much not needed. All this content is very much not needed uh, at all. But uh, having different uh, looking people, appropriate looking people when you're playing those nations is very nice. So uh, I put the Muslim advisors pack, uh, portrait pack as the m most important one in the content. And then you have a, a crap ton of different uh, content packs. Call to Arms, Common Sense, Eldorado, Cossacks, and all kinds of uh, content packs, which add uh, a lot of different uh, unit graphics, which are uh, only just graphics, so th there's no need for that. It's not new units or anything, it's just graphics uh, for your units. But if you have uh, like some uh, favorite uh, nations you like playing, you might want to get some of those uh, content packs and the unit packs uh, to portray your favorite nations. Especially if you want like a specific looking, uh, say, uh, Muslim ships and Muslim units and uh, Native American units and all of that. Uh, to make a clear difference between uh, like the European and uh, the other nation uh, units. Then you might want these. But these are very much not needed at all. Then there's a National Monuments Pack and uh, there's also another National Monuments Pack which, which is combined with uh, in one of the content packs. And they just add uh, basically nice graphics to the map, these nas big national mo monument buildings. But they don't actually do anything other than there's a, a nice building on the map, which in my opinion is totally useless. So probably skip these, unless you want some more uh, more crap to just populate the map and confuse stuff. They are, uh, they are not needed at all. And then there's the ebooks and the anthology. Uh, which are also sold as the DLC. So unless you really, really want to dive into the history and lore and all that, you don't really need the ebooks and the anthology of the alternate history. Just skip those. And then there's the music. And uh, I feel some of the music is very much recommended, although very much not needed. It's just uh, music. Some people don't even like to play the game with the music on, so you probably want to just disable the music. And if you are one of those people, probably don't buy <laughs> buy the DLC to add more. But if you like the in-game music, like I, I like this song, this uh, the one in, playing in the background is the main menu music, and uh, I really like that. And some of the other songs are really good, especially the Guns, Drums, and Steel one and two. Uh, they are very very good, and uh, I, I would highly recommend those. Also the songs of War, Guns, Drums, and Steel, both of them plus the songs of War. Uh, Add a lot of really, really cool, nice songs that play a lot of times, uh, especially because you do, do a lot of wars, you want songs of war, naturally. Then we have uh, the Kairi's uh, soundtracks, which are uh, from uh, from the sounds from the community. So there's a community member uh, who made uh, some amazing music for the game, and there's a soundtrack part 1 and 2, and they are very much uh, like a Asian themed, uh, Japan, China, Korea. And if you are playing uh, in that region and like that kind of music, I, I highly recommend these because they, they definitely <laughs> bring the nice uh, theme and uh, feel when you are playing as uh, one of the Asian nations and uh, the music is not this uh, Central European uh, type of music, it's more uh, more appropriate to the Eastern, Eastern cultures. So I, I highly recommend that if you are playing uh, in the Asian region. Get those uh, Kairi's soundtracks. They're uh, really nice uh, ju just to listen anyways. And then there's the uh, Songs of the New World. So if you're playing in the in the New World, uh, one of the Native Americans or uh, anything in, in there, the Songs of the New World are same uh, same, same, uh, same for them as the Kairi's for the Asian region. And then there's uh, the last three uh, music packs, uh, which I highly recommend against. Maybe not uh, the Republican music is okay-ish, but I, I would skip on that, it's not very good. And then uh, Zabaton soundtrack. Zabaton is really amazing, but I don't think the songs are really fit uh, the other songs in the game, and it kind of feels uh, jarring to have them uh, in there. Just listen to your Zabaton albums uh, <laughs> when not playing this game, and don't really 
get the soundtrack for that. And then there's the Fredman's Epistles, which are big, big no, 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 no. <laughs> it's this uh, guy singing in Swedish that sounds just horrible. <laughs> so I highly recommend against against the Fredman's Epistles. Epistles. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the guide to buying DLCs for uh, Europe Renaissance 4. So the ex first six expansions very important, and then uh, so the rest of the expansions uh, that you might wanna buy if you are focusing on playing in that region, and then uh, content and music is pretty much if you feel like getting any of them. Uh, there is a new DLC coming in October 2006. In a couple months from recording this video, and uh, it seems to add a lot of uh, really, really good gameplay. It's not on the list at the moment, uh, the Rights of Man, but uh, it's highly recommended. I would put it uh, in the very, very top of the expansion somewhere there, with the Art of War and Cossacks and Common Sense, the Rights of Man, when that comes out. So definitely, definitely get that as well if you are watching this video later on. But anyways, that's it uh, for me this time. So hopefully this helps you, helps you guys pick out some DLC for the game for yourself. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. So bye bye.